Hi there. Good morning and welcome to the show. And uh, we're having more fun than humans should be allowed to have. But that's pretty much standard procedure for us. Uh, my first guest on this show is the star of the motion picture, Ordinary People. Please welcome Mary Tyler Moore. You know, Mary. Especially Betsy. <laughs> <laughs> you look good and you smell you. good. <laughs> you really do. You Thank you. You smell very nice. Uh, you... I've always felt that way about you, David. Really? Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Not a lot of people say that to me. Um, I, I just want to take a second to. I saw this movie, Ordinary People. What a! It's a killer. It's just terrific. Thank and, you very uh, much. Did you have to wait in line? I waited in line for about an hour. With uh, uh, it was it was cold and nasty, but. Uh, that's the kind of dedicated guy you are. Thank though. you very much. Uh, it was worth it. Was worth it. It was wonderful, and uh, you were terrific. Uh, Donald Sutherland was terrific. Yeah, and really. Tell me about Timothy Hutton. Timothy Hutton is the most extraordinary actor. He's uh, he was 19. He just turned 20. Uh, he had done a couple of television movies before that, but uh, a rather limited background, mm -hmm. and the, the the scope of his performance, I think, is just so incredible. Yeah. He's going to be something to, to watch. Talent to watch, as they say. It's unbelievable. And a really nice, nice young man. Now, what I forgot about during the course of the movie, uh, which is, I guess, the way it should be, the, the man who directed it, yeah. is Robert Redford. Indeed. Now, how can you be in the room with this guy and, and not feel... Well, how did you feel? It's interesting, because he is one of the brightest, most sensitive people I've ever been around. And we would be uh, deeply into conversation <clears throat> and uh, really involved talking. And, mm -hmm. and then every once in a while, I'd pull back and I'd say, oh, my God, look at the face. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just amazing. Yeah. He has the demeanor of, of an unattractive man, one who has had to work on the inside, you know, and uh, not counting yeah. what he looks like. How does he smell? One <laughs> um, <laughs> different, different. Not better, David. Just this, different. This movie, and, and I, uh, I know we're not supposed to dwell on this movie, but uh, uh, nobody had an easy job. It was so, uh, such intensity, but it's not the kind that wears you out. It just it captivates you. Yeah. Was it tough to do this? It was challenging, yeah. But I love a challenge. It, it really was uh, extraordinarily good work, and uh, there was a lot of rehearsal and a, a lot of freedom. Bob is a wonderful director in, the, in that way, and mm -hmm. that uh, he really lets you contribute, and um, he knows what he wants going in, but if you have a better idea, his ego is such that he can accept mm -hmm. it. Well, those and are terrific it. working conditions. Yeah. Uh, we have a snippet of this production that we're going snippet? to... A snippet, yes. A tiny excerpt of uh, Ordinary People. So if you folks here in the studio will uh, watch the monitors, and at home, I guess the TV would work. Mary Tyler Moore. We have to pause for a commercial. I forgot to have you explain to folks what that was about. Maybe you can do that. Too late we... now. No, no. She'll do it when we come back. Oh, welcome back to the show. Mary Tyler Moore. Uh, I know I've done this backwards. Forgive me. What what did we look at there? What was going on? I don't know. I haven't <laughs> seen the movie. That was a scene uh, toward the end of the picture where uh, Beth, who's a, a real matriarch, uh, begins to feel threatened by the fact that her son is going to see a psychiatrist. And uh, Calvin is beginning to sense that there's a real problem, not just with the son, but with the, the, the relationship that exists between the three of them. Focus mostly on Beth, who's... Not a good communicator. Yeah. Uh, this must be a lot of fun for you because you were uh, loved and adored as Mary Richards, who was anything but what uh, Beth is. Mm -hmm. And now you're loved and adored because you're just uh, kind of a, a, a nasty, not a nasty person. I don't but know if I'm loved and adored. It, it, times past, people would come up to me in the street and say, hey, Mayor, how are you? Now they're going, uh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> but that's terrific. I mean, you're, you're, you're receiving a lot of... Uh, uh, well, they're acclaimed. interested, and that's nice. Is, is there anything in you? I don't know anything about you personally. What, <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what should we know about you? 
Uh, well, most of the things that you should know about me, I'm not going to tell. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is uh, Was there any kind of, uh, do you have anything uh, in your own life with your family that uh, was helpful when you played oh, the part sure. of Oh, sure. And not just with my family, though, with, with people I've known, people I've, I've worked with who, you know, are tough and uh, uncommunicative and you yeah. know, give other people around them a, a problem. You know, some people that I worked with on a variety series that I did, for example, there was a <laughs> man who came out and, and was the um, antagonist. Yes, we. Uh, uh, there was a, it was a show that the, I was on with you, which was on for th three weeks. Yeah. And then it went on to finish up without me for a little yeah, longer. It did, and and did spectacularly well. What? Uh, <laughs> I don't know what the reason was. It was. Uh, oh well, uh, enough about that. Um, <laughs> let me ask you this. You know, uh, um, how did you get that job on that movie? Well, uh, <laughs> what? Frank's laughing because he's thinking about how he's going to get a job now that we're done. <laughs> um, but, I mean, you, you were terrific in it. But who had well, the foresight to say she'd be great? Bob Redford um, told me that when he had first read the book in galley form four years before, he had envisioned me as the, as the mother before he knew he was going to buy the, the property and, and make a movie. And he said also that he had always been fascinated by what might be the dark side of Mary Tyler Moore, mm -hmm. because in most everything I've done, it's been sunny and open and mm -hmm. optimistic. And, and he knew, that little devil, that there, <laughs> there was a lot of other stuff happening. Did, did you ever grow to resent that, the fact that you were uh, the, the gal next door? Excuse me for uh, that. But... <laughs> only um, in that it might limit what I could do, and I, I love uh, diversification. And to the extent that uh, people wouldn't accept that, that, that gets to be a little frightening. But I think with this, um, a lot of the, the locked into sunny girl next door image will be dispelled. And yeah, that's good. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, now tell me about the Broadway play. How did you, uh, you know, this is what I love about this situation. After the variety show folded, you were so successful for so many years. It's just like people are waiting for someone as successful as you are to have a failure. And they were, it seems true that they were hoping maybe you'd just retire from show business, but you didn't. You went to the Broadway play, which was not an easy thing to do. Oh, I, I don't have such a jaded view of people as that. I think there are maybe about 17 people who hope you fall on your face, but yeah. we tend to magnify that. I don't think it's true. Uh, I'm awfully glad I did that play, and um, it was uh, my agent's idea. Uh, the producer, Manny Eisenberg, had called him to ask about the availability of another actor to replace Tom Conti, and my agent suggested me. And uh, it just, that quickly, Manny loved the idea. He had always thought that it was an asexual um, play and therefore could be done by man or woman. And it was wonderful. So what are you doing now? You're, you're living in New York, right? I'm living in New York, yeah, by dribs and drabs. I keep um, saying, well, I'll just stay another month. Well, I'll just stay another two months. And now I've kind of committed to stay another six months. I really like this city. It's, it, it's so fascinating. You, you can't be bored here. I mean, the minute you walk out your door, you, you encounter either a man walking towards you with a snake coiled around his hand, <laughs> or you can go to the Metropolitan Museum. Yeah. Somebody, but it's life, you know. It's, uh, there's a comedian whose name I can't remember now as the great joke. He says, people say New York's not friendly. It's friendly. Go out on the street, they'll touch you. <laughs> yeah. Very, very uh, That's true. friendly place. Well, what are you going to do? Are you going to uh, do more features? Uh, I'd like to. I really like that form. Um, uh, I go where the work is, though. I, it doesn't matter to me whether it's play, Broadway, or uh, play, play or, mo or movie. Yeah. Or, um, but I'd, I'd really like to do another feature or two. I'd like to do another drama and then maybe one after that, and someday have somebody say to me, yes, but can you do comedy? <laughs> uh, it's, it's a terrific thing for you to stop by. I'm real pleased you did thank that. Thank you so, and, my And your David. movie is just wonderful. Thank you. So uh, are you. I love this show. Thank it's you just very much. The highlight of my morning. Mary Tyler Moore. We'll be right back. Um, oh, this is interesting. This display right here. You'll probably, probably recognize this item from the opening of the Dick Van Dyke show. Yes, it's the very same ottoman that Dick himself tripped over once a week for five years. Still in pretty good condition, don't you think so? Now, uh, this simple knit cap picked over hundreds of hats which auditioned for a bit part in the now classic opening of the tremendously popular Mary Tyler Moore Show. It was chosen for its unique ability to defy conventional physical laws. Let me demonstrate how this works, okay? 
Just pretend now that I would be Mary Tyler Moore. Thank you very much. Welcome back to the show. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, moments ago across the hall, there is a program done for gr Greater New York City uh, entitled uh, Live at Five, and a guest on that show was uh, Mary Tyler Moore. Mary is here tonight to say... Hello. That's very nice of you to come over. Well, it's, it's my pleasure, David. I haven't worked in a long time, so what I'm doing these days is just work, walking from studio to studio, just looking to, to see if there's anything, you know, any little crumb. Door to door, kind yeah, of back yeah. to grassroots. Right. Yeah, you, you look terrific. I haven't Thank seen you. you in a long time, and you must be kidding. You must be on the verge of some major project or in the middle of some major project or I am I have bacon on the stove as we speak no. and I have to go home and turn it over it's probably too late isn't when it when was the last time you <laughs> cooked bacon do you actually cook I actually don't at oh, all yeah. I thought see so. I think of cooking as a kind of art form and the thought of somebody after you've poured all your creativity into it eating it is a kind of mortal insult sure. to the artist <laughs> so you don't waste your time on that. no yeah no let uh, them eat cake <laughs> now if you if, if you had if you had to leave right now and go out and get yourself something to eat what would it be right now a cheeseburger no really? question yes uh, a bacon cheeseburger <laughs> the greasier the better or? yes absolutely cheapest is best really where your cheeseburger is Probably down in the uh, Times Square area down there and get yourself a, a Wimpy's or something or a Blimpy's yeah, or... Yeah, right. Probably best that I don't go down to Times Square, no, though. No. You, uh, you and I spent an interesting summer together once, didn't we? Are we going to talk about that? <laughs> uh, no, this woman was, was uh, kind, <laughs> kind enough uh, to employ me and some other people on a, a, a program. And, and you was... were kind enough to be there and make me look funny. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, yes, no. yes, 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 yes. No, no, it was, uh, it, it, the whole summer was, what's wrong with this picture? And it was, <laughs> why is Letterman standing next to Mary Tyler Moore? That no, was a, no, no. the problem. But it was a lot of fun. The ill-fated variety hour. It was not on long, but it, uh, no. I learned an awful lot. So did I. Really? Don't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, now, you, you mentioned something about a baseball game you're involved in? Yes, last week. This will be after the fact. Right. There okay. was a baseball game uh, between uh, the uh, CBS All-Stars and North Shore Child Guidance, uh -huh. which is a mental health organization of which I'm a part. And you, you played or just showed up? No, to... I watched and didn't know very much of what was going on at all. Yeah. I'm one of those people who doesn't know the difference between football and baseball, really. Yeah. Well, it's really the tricky. The pointy-ended ball is the one they use for football. That's right. right. The Good. pointy, the pointy ended ball. Uh, it's it's a uh, swell of you to do this. Just Thank to come you. in and say hello. And I know you're going to go out and get yourself a cheeseburger. cheeseburger. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mary, anytime you want to, uh, please come over. Okay. Thank As you very secretary much. or performer? Just anything. Just drop by and say hello. Okay, Whatever well, you want to do. Mary Tyler Moore, ladies and gentlemen. Well, this is exciting. We're excited, we're happy, and a little bit nervous. My first guest tonight is one of the most popular television stars of all time. She currently has her own series, of course, on another network entitled Mary, and she will also be starring in a film that opens around the country March 21st called Just Between Friends. Please say hello to Mary Tyler Moore. <laughs> Now, this makes it a show. Look at that. There you go. It's Mary Tyler Moore right here on the show. <laughs> now we're getting somewhere. Oh, no, I think you were building just fine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, those building blocks <laughs> there, the sure way. Now this. This is a, a, a lovely it's arrangement because of fruit. You said in the, uh, the Newsweek cover story that, uh, that you had never been able to share fruit with a, me, fruit being the uh, metaphor for success and feeling at home on a variety show format. <laughs> <laughs> I saw this man dressed as a pirate. A pirate? A rat? Uh, doing macho man. No, you refused to do macho macho no, man, didn't you? No, <laughs> no, But you were good. So anyway, do you want to share fruit? I'd love to have some fruit. Have these, a grape, these grape and look like official. They're... You don't want... Oh, that's very nice. Thank you very much, Mary. That's, uh... <laughs> Now, you know, that was only a joke, because when we, we worked on, when I worked on your show, 
No, we worked together on a uh, show. I don't know. What what memories do you have of that summer? What what uh, when anybody brings that up, what do you what do you say to yourself uh, that pops into your mind? Oh, it was terrifying. It really was. I mean, it was horrendous doing a, a show, an hour-long show with music and choreography in five days and having to deal with him. Uh-huh. <laughs> you were wonderful. You really were. I mean, you were a very special character. No, 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 yeah. no. Yeah, no. I mean, you were the only man in America who was mean to America's sweetheart. That's right. That's right, I was. You gave me a tough time, and I loved it. Uh... But, so, all right, hey, hold it, hold it. I don't know, I don't know what the problem is here tonight. Um, <laughs> now, speaking of, of previous shows, I think I have this correct, and if I'm, I don't tell me, of course. I that, will. That the first character you played on a television show or on television was uh, a pixie. Yes. And what was the pixie's name? Happy Hot Point. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, what exactly did Happy Hot Point do? Why are you doing this to me, David? No, no. <laughs> Happy Hot Point was the, the little logo uh, elf for Hot Point appliances mm -hmm. on the Ozzy and Harriet show. And you would do the commercials for, for the Hot Point people? Yes, yeah, so I would be this high superimposed on a, an ice tray skating, mm -hmm. saying, Hi, Harriet, aren't you glad you have a Hot Point refrigerator? <laughs> a logical beginning, yeah. isn't it? And then Harriet would get the fly swatter and wham! <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> and then after, was, was uh, Richard Diamond after that? Yes, yes, yeah. Richard and, Diamond. And, and of course, uh, the thing that everybody remembers about this is on that show, we never really saw much above your... The knees, you'd see a close-up of my mouth, and I spoke in a, a very low voice. Yeah. Hi, Mr. D. Yeah. And I how... don't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Not even at parties? No, sure, they don't allow on. it. Uh, but now, th now this seems, uh, did you have to audition your legs for that? Did people... I guess so, yeah. Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no more calls. We have a winner. You, I mean, um, and Richard Diamond was um, played by whom? David Jansen. That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Detective and how long was that on? I, don't, I think that was on for some time, three or four years, but I only did it for about uh, half of one season. Yeah. And then I got itchy to <laughs> show more of myself. Yeah. And, and then the, was the next one then the... Uh, then was the Van Dyke Show. Yeah, the Dick yeah. Van Dyke Show. You know, uh, I guess you're aware of this. That, There is now, around you in your career, a large compilation of uh, sort of trivia questions. And, uh, and do you mind if I ask you some of these? Sure, go ahead. I you, probably uh, don't know the answer. No, you mean, I would think you would know all of them. Okay. Uh, uh, this is, I wouldn't have known this one. At what address did Rob and Laura Petrie live on the Dick Van Dyke Show? Oh, it was, it was Bonnie Meadow Road. Right. But I don't remember the number. 485. Right. 485. <laughs> all right. <laughs> 0 for 1. <laughs> no, half. Come on. Oh, all right, Mary. Good heavens, if you're going to whine, sure. <laughs> what was Laura Petrie's occupation before her marriage? You would know that, of course. I'm, she was a dancer. That's right, a USO dancer. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Rob and Laura's son, Richie, had an acronym for a middle name. The whole episode was built around Rosebud. this Rosebud. Rosebud. What did it stand for? Oh, that's oh, a really tough. A little, a little uh, uh, mystery uh, 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 quiz show music. Rosebud. <laughs> I feel like I'm in a stupid pet trick. <laughs> it was, uh, th <laughs> this was tough. Robert, Oscar, Samuel, Edward, Benjamin, Ulysses, David. Right. That was a very cute episode. I remember that. Okay. You want to continue this, or is this just know. deadly boring? <laughs> uh, we'll do one more here. Okay. Okay. Uh, what was Lou Grant's ex-wife name on the show, the Mary Tyler Moore show? Edie. That's right, Edie. Okay. okay so. All right. We'll, uh, I tell you what, can you stick around a little bit longer? Uh, Come on, please. Okay. All right, we'll be right back here with uh, Mary Tyler Moore. Tell us about Mary. It's on CBS. 
Yes. It, it ought to be here, but it's on CBS. Uh, well, yes, but there you have it. It's there on CBS. It, yeah. um, and it's moving to a new time period. It'll be on 9 o'clock on Tuesdays, starting in about three weeks. All right. And, and what is it, what are we talking about here? You play a woman who works for a newspaper in Chicago. That's right. And, and you're from another paper. What was the other? Oh, uh. I had worked for um, a very conservative woman's magazine. I was mm -hmm. a fashion editor there. And when that magazine folded, I had to, because there, was n there were no other choices, go to work for a kind of a tabloid. Kind of uh, a rag. Kind, a kind of, of a rag, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, paper as a helpline columnist. Mm -hmm. And uh, who else is in the show? Uh, James Farentino. Right. And now, what's John he Aston. like to work with? Is he He's all right? He's wonderful, yeah. and he is such a good comedian. He yeah. hadn't had a, a lot. But of see, you know, that's people. what happens. And this is going to sound like one of those funny things they say on talk shows. But people who uh, who, uh, who who work with you always end up being better than you ever thought they were going to be, anyway. Really? Yeah, that's what happens. Well, that's very nice. That's Thank the truth. you. I, I mean, I feel that way about the other people I work with. I mean, the, the better they are, the more talented they are, the better I look. And, you know, so it's not all loving. It's you, really you don't selfish. really feel that way, do you? you yes, really, I do. You really think they're holding you back, don't no, you? No, well, okay, sure. <laughs> Maybe three or four, but. <laughs> and, and you mentioned, uh, um, I'm sorry, I interrupted you there. The other gentleman on the show? Uh, John Astin. Yeah, yeah, no, he's yeah, terrific. Isn't he's he? wonderful, yeah, wonderful. Yeah. They all are. Terrific bunch. And the film. The film is Just Between Friends, and that uh, was written and directed by Alan Burns, who co-created my last series. And it's a story of uh, a friendship between two women, Christine Lottie and I, and Sam Waterston and Ted Danson. It, it's funny? Yes, it's funny. It's a kind of what I guess they call a crossover movie. It's funny, and it has some very heavy, dramatic moments, yeah. and it's a little like life. Yeah. Hopefully a lot like life. Yeah. I'm very pleased with it. Um, um... I, I drew a blank there, but you have a dog here. I was thinking, I was thinking of the uh, the uh, ordinary people. Yes. Talk about real life. Oh, geez, I still cry thinking yeah. about that thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now, tell me about your dog. This is a great dog. I heard about him all day. He's a wonderful dog. He's a golden retriever. He's a year old. His name is Dash, and and we are showing him. He goes to rings for confirmation for beauty. He's not really trained to do anything in particular, uh -huh. except when he's alone in the house with us. Um, he does catch the ball. He'll go find the ball, too. He's here. Do you want to He's bring here. him out? He's here. you want to bring him Let's out? Let's meet Dash. He's also... <laughs> Come on, Dash. Come on, buddy. One-year-old. Oh, All right, Dash. Oh, Come here, Dash. Come on, buddy. Come here. Dash. Come here, Dash. Hi, Dash. How you doing, buddy? Yeah. Oh, this is There's a beautiful ball. ball. There's the ball. All right, now. Oh, there goes the thing. <gasps> oh, no. Don't yeah. break the no. thing. No. He'll get the fairies. Don't let him get those. <laughs> okay. okay. Now, here. Do you want him to, to find it? Yeah, do okay. whatever you want to do right, with him. Dash. Right. What a Come beautiful here. dog. Come here. Dash. Sit. Stay. Give me the ball. Oh, very nice. Stay. Very nice. Okay, now where could I hide it where the camera could see it? No, sit. Uh, sit. Right over there. I guess you okay, can hide stay. it over there. Right. Dash, come here. But he's Dash. not supposed to look. Come here, Dash. Talk to me. Dash. <laughs> no, that's not believe. Jeez, that would have been an unbelievable trick, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> come here, right Dash. Here. Come on, buddy. Come here. I'll put it Okay, there. we've hidden it right there by the monitor. Did the okay. camera see it? Okay, there's we'll Dash. Go find. Go we'll find. Okay, Where Dash. Is it? Come on. Da -da 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 Come on, Dash. Where is Come on, it? Buddy. Where is it? Come on, Dash. Go we'll find. <laughs> Come back. Where is it? Where this is, is like it? Maybe it's here. Maybe it's right near you. It's Maybe. Like Look, up Look up higher. Look up here. He found it! Yeah! Yay! Yeah! Very nice. Good All right, Dash. Boy, that's a beautiful dog. Oh, that's a lovely. You got your hands full there. <laughs> All right, Dash. Uh, Mary, thank you very thank much. You, I know David. you're very busy. Thank you for being here. And March 21st, the film begins. Thanks so much. Good luck to you. Here, thank Dash. You. Here you go, Dash. All right. We'll be right back. And give my best to your little Bengal friends. I certainly will. Uh, our first guest tonight is uh, one of the most popular, talented, and uh, let's face it, beloved people in the history of American television. This weekend, this woman will be hosting Saturday Night Live on another network. <laughs> no. It's on, so it's on this network. <laughs> Please welcome Mary Tyler Moore.
<laughs> you, uh, you just look terrific. Well, thanks. So I do you. Uh, You've no, gotten no. very tan. Well, I was on vacation. Were you on vacation? Yes, I was on vacation. Where'd you go? We went to uh, Canyon Ranch in what Tucson, is, Arizona. What is that? It's a fitness spa. Mm -hmm. Uh, where people who are, it's a very serious grown-up kind of spa. Where not, a, people, not a place for runaways or No, something. no, yeah. or, for, or for the extremely chubby. Yeah. Uh, this is a place where people who are already fit go to get fitter. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know? And wh how long were you there? Uh, about a week, and it almost killed me. Really? Yeah. Are you out there, like, uh, roping steers and that sort of well, thing? Well, everything but, yeah. You know, they've got every piece of equipment, machinery that you've ever seen in a gym. Mm -hmm. Plus, they have hikes that start at 6.30 in the morning. Right. And, uh, you know... Were you getting up at 6.30 in the morning or not? We were setting our alarm for 6.30 faithfully every night uh -huh. and then turning it off at 6.30 in now, the morning. Now, do they enforce this? If you're not up at 6.30, they send a guy in and he uh, gets you out of bed and, and uh, throws yeah, you in the shower? Yeah, but he's not too tough. Yeah. You know, he's reasonable <laughs> about it. No, 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 no. They treat you like grown-ups. So you get to choose what you're going to eat. Um, and, and you, uh, what else can you do? Uh, you go a little bananas is what you do right. after a while because there's no intellectual stimulation. It's just all this body stuff. Yeah. Do they have linen service? Uh, no. As a matter of fact, they don't. They, they have a washer and dryer in your own you suite. Do your own stuff? Yeah. yeah. Now, yeah. why would you want a, a trip like this? You should be, you should be, you know, somewhere in Monaco dancing or something. Do you think so, really? Yeah. Yeah, but see, most people are, are, are beginning to think about places where they used to go and lie in the sun mm -hmm. because we know now that that's stupid. Bad for you, sure. Even though you look great. Well, I didn't... <laughs> that's... Sweet of you to say, but I... It's just I, not I, too smart anymore, It's not too David. smart, and I wasn't, wasn't lying in the sun. What I, were you doing? I had trouble with my microwave. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, but, but you, you... You weren't going to touch me then, were I you? I would love... Can I? <laughs> I remember when you and I worked together, and periodically I was supposed to touch you, and it was just <laughs> yes. like the most... I thought, oh, geez, I, me... <laughs> A bonehead, I have to touch Mary Tyler Moore. And it just used to make me, I would just be, ah, 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 ah. one of those deals. I know. Yeah, it was so very, un very unsettled. How respectful you were yeah, then. Sure. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, how's your husband? Which one? <laughs> Whoa! Oh, no, I <laughs> yeah, well. I know why, because you said that when we were engaged, you were married. I was married at the time, <laughs> yeah. and I'm no longer married to that person. No. Lovely man, yeah. just lovely. And you're married to a lovely man but now, I'm aren't you? I'm married to a lovelier man now. Yeah. You like a, this one better? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, For almost. now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it's like. I've been hanging around Henny Youngman. Yeah, you're yeah. nuts. You've lost Everything your mind. Everything but the uh, cigar. Yeah, we gotta, we got to do a commercial? Oh, okay, well, but stick around. Okay. And uh, we'll be right back here. With Mary Tyler. Yeah, ho, 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 ho. Mary Tyler Moore is here, kid inventors, and uh, Frank Sinatra Jr. Did you ever meet Frank Sinatra Jr.? No, I didn't, but I saw him this morning on somebody's show. Probably Regis and Vicki Lee. Yes, I think. Yeah, no, it's Kathy Lee. Kathy Lee. Not Vicki Lee. Vicki Lee, yeah. Vicki Lee is the other one. Uh, well, how, how are you doing? What's going on in your life? You feel okay? Everything good? You look great. Well, thanks. Yes, I do, and I am, and yeah. probably... Yeah, good. Um, and you're you're hosting a Saturday Night Live this weekend. I am. It's it's really a lot of fun. If if you're a masochist, which I am, because I mean they, you know, here it is Thursday. We're doing this show on Saturday, right. and we still haven't rehearsed any of the sketches, and there are about twelve of them. Yeah, but a... it'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's an amazing bit of logistical effort that they pull off every week, Isn't and also it? and also I would guess that those people up there. Uh, feel exactly about you the way I felt about you, and still do to some measure, many years ago. Where Why only to some measure? Kind of, uh, I don't know, I just, I started talking and I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> uh, but what kind of things are you doing up there? I'm doing a lot of really crazy, weird stuff. I'm, yeah. I'm going to be one of the Sweeney sisters. Mm -hmm. Oh, that'd be good. And um, I'm, I'm playing a, a tough guy, uh -huh. uh, a, a man, guy? a man, yeah. actually a man in one sketch, or maybe not. I mean, they cut these things, so yeah. you never know. So that, but that but keeps a lot of good your... stuff. Yeah. I'm doing a Mary Richards uh, How to Be Successful in a Man's World seminar. Mm -hmm. That'll be good. And we are doing uh, Dan and Marilyn Quayle as Rob and Laura Petrie. 
Very funny. That's, yeah, yeah, it's going to be yeah. good. It's going to be good. Uh, you also, uh, you, you've had a really successful career and, well, I don't want to say a long career, but you, you have. You've had a long career, and that's good. That's the object, to have a long career. Moderately long. I still have some to go. <laughs> well, no, I, I don't, don't mean... touch me I, anymore. Sorry. <laughs> wow, did she just like that? Uh, but you, uh, you, you worked with Elvis Presley once or twice? Why did you bring that up? I don't know. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm proud of the, the, of the working with him because it was fun and he was wonderful. Yeah, I did a terrible little movie called What's So... Uh, no, uh, that was another one. This one was called Change of Habit. Change of Habit. You in, played a nun. I played a nun who went out into the streets in street clothes, ergo the title, mm -hmm. Change of Habit. Right. And Elvis was a singing surgeon. Ah, a singing surgeon. Yes, a realistic, A singing surgeon. Uh, why not? So while he's opening someone up or closing <laughs> someone up... Uh, he wasn't singing at the time. No. It was in between. Yeah, torn between the torn, show business and medicine. Right, and I was torn between the convent exactly, and Elvis. Exactly, perfect. Uh, uh, did you did you uh, become friendly with the man? Did you like the guy? He liked you? To a degree. It was it was not like it was with you and me. Now, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to read that. <laughs> well, the engagement and all, remember? Ah, I see, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, it was wonderful. He was so respectful of me. It was really... He was at his peak. He was in great condition, and he was vocalizing, and he was... And very much kind of smitten with me and if he didn't watch himself he called me ma'am yeah well you see know, I, I have the same reaction but you you could you were both just kids when you did this film right yeah. You, yeah 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 well I think I how old would he be now if he were still alive geez I don't know Paul of course the he musical is, question but... Paul yeah what do you what do you mean if he were alive <laughs> yeah. of course how old would Elvis be now he would be at 53 53 be... years okay. and about how much would he weigh <laughs> he would weigh, well it would depend you know. um, Let's see, what else are we doing? What? No. It's time to go? You can't meet my dog? You have a dog? I have a dog. I have another dog. You oh, remember let Dash, bring out her the dog. golden retriever? Yeah, bring out... This, this is, is his Mary's dog. Mary and her dog. Oh, my God, what is this? this Come on over here. Not, this is a, um, a, a pedigree breed. This is called a Petit Basset Griffin Bombier. And what do you, what do, you do with them? Well... They go back to the 16th century, and they were bred for hunting rabbits. There, the, ergo the, the long the, hair and the short That's a very strange-looking dog. Is it an unusual breed? It is an unusual breed. They've just been accepted into the American Kennel Club. People stop me on the street and say, what is that? And I tell them it's a <laughs> Petit Basset Griffin Bondier, and they say, sure. Yeah. Is, <laughs> yeah, is he, right. uh, is a, he mutt. a good pet? He's a good pet. He's not a pet. He's a little boy who's trapped in a dog suit. <laughs> See? Isn't he? Look at that. Look at the eyes. Hello. Oh, look at Hello. The eyes. Hello. See? Hello. This is Dudley Moore. <laughs> <laughs> He's a sweetheart, and he, he gets is. along well with the other dog. He, they don't really. They fight quite a bit, but uh, they are wonderful to watch. Because Dash, <laughs> this 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 noble English golden retriever, and then this one, uh -huh. who's sort of like the Dustin Hoffman to his John Voight. Yeah, I see. Go, <laughs> go ahead and put him back in that headlock, Mary. He seemed, <laughs> he seemed to like that. Nice to see you again. Thank you very much for coming on. Beautiful doggy. Mary Tyler Moore and her dog. Be careful. Bye-bye. Thank you, boys. Sounds great. Some nights it strikes me that you sound even better than ever. Uh, thank you very nice much. Job. I appreciate it. Uh, in this half hour, musicians Frank Sinatra Jr. and Was, not Was? Not Was, not Was. That's right. Tomorrow on the program, singer Chaka Khan? Khan? Chaka Khan will be here. Uh, Jack Cover. Cover? That I don't know. <laughs> uh, from the National Aquarium uh, in uh, Baltimore. Don't you think, does it strike you that Mary Tyler Moore has gotten goofy? Uh, <laughs> She's okay. very sweet, very lovely, but She's I don't lovely. recall her being that goofy and chatty and uh, happy and, yeah, a little loose. That's right. She was loose. Tonight. And then she brings the beloved family pet out here and puts it in a sleeper hold. Well. <laughs>
Our first guest is uh, one of the most recognized and beloved women in the history of television. Wow. Wow. Uh, she will be uh, starring in the NBC movie entitled Thanksgiving Day. Ladies and gentlemen, here she is once again, the one, the only, Mary Tyler Moore. <laughs> I'm goofy. Nah. Yeah, last time you were here, I remarked that you seemed like you might have been goofy. A well, and goofy. it was after, it was behind my back, which was still all the more shocking. <laughs> no, no, it was, it was meant as a compliment, of course. In the, no, it no, no, wasn't, goofy David. in the I finest sense. I watch you all the time. I know uh, your lexicon, no, and I know no, what goofy no, no, means no, no. to you. You said I was goofy. And you seemed a bit, a, bit, um, uh, a bit preoccupied, a bit distracted, and I know that was the week that you were hosting Saturday Night Live, so you had a million that's things right, on your I mind. That's right, I wasn't. I had my dog yeah, that's with right. me, and I was, I was concerned. Any one of those would make a person goofy. That's right. So there's nothing to be ashamed of. You don't really think that I'm goofy. You, you know, you know that I have and continue to, to think the world well, of you. I would you. like to think that. I'm very competitive, and I'd yeah. like to think I rank up there with Terry Garr and Connie Chung. Oh, oh man. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you something. Let me tell you. Here. You know I'm serious. Oh, no, no. I Believe me, and I, and I would tell you where you rank in the scheme of things, but I, I don't have that kind of time. Okay. After you come back from the commercial, after I leave. Yeah, okay, we'll take care of it then. Yeah. then. Uh, uh, <laughs> now, now, you know what? Everybody uh, is going crazy with the, the big Murphy Brown show on CBS. Yes. And it's a nice show, and Candace Bergen is fine, and it's funny, and, and it's doing very well. It's like the blockbuster. But I'm telling you, I look at that show, and I think, yeah, it's a fine show, but boy, oh boy, was the old Mary Tyler Moore show a killer. Oh, God, love you, baby. Yeah. Uh, Why do anyway. you have to make room for the young people? Yeah, well, no, there? I know. But, but I mean, I, I think since uh, if you haven't seen your show uh, in, in a while, because I don't, in some areas it's on for a while and it's not on yeah. for a while and they keep bringing them back and bringing them back. Right. And then uh, you take a look at the, that show uh, and start to think about the, how, how great your show was. It's, uh, well, it's true. Well, thanks. Yeah. But uh, it is a good show anyway. Oh, yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not, not as good as mine was. <laughs> well, <laughs> come on, Mary. Let's, don't, let's yeah. don't get ugly here. All right. <laughs> Um, anyway, now, uh, uh, tell me about your house. You live upstate, right? No, we live in the city, but we have a house upstate. Yeah. And yeah. we live there a lot of the time. Now, when you say upstate, where, where is that? This is in Millbrook, New York. It's about an hour and a half north of here. Yes, Millbrook? They're lying, they're lying, they're lying. <laughs> You've never been to Millbrook. <laughs> Uh, and is it is it uh, rolling hillside? Or are we in the mountains? Rolling hillside. Um, it's it's racehorse breeding country. Yeah. All um, we're surrounded by by horses and and cows and sheep and and llamas. Mm -hmm. One of our neighbors raises llamas. Now, is it's, that a good idea to have llamas up there with the horses and stuff? You wouldn't want to get them together. Yeah. No, you wouldn't want to do that. Llamas spit. Yeah. They are not lovely, serene. Animals. Have you met my manager, Mr. Rollins? <laughs> Uh, so now, when you go up there, you don't have a farm, do you? It's just like you have some property, but well, you're not. It's it's a, it's, a um, it's not a working farm. Not a working but we farm. Have, that's what I mean. We have some property, and we have horses. Have we horses. started out with just a couple of horses, and and we found that um, the, the 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 dream has expanded into mm -hmm. something that has taken over our lives. We now we started with two horses that lived in another stable. Then we brought them to our house, and we yeah. had to build a barn. And then, because one of the horses was a little antisocial, uh, we had to put her in a separate area with a mule. And then we realized that we didn't have enough horses for guests when they came up wow. to ride. Now, see, weekend, it's interesting. So... You, you buy this place for a little relaxation, and suddenly exactly. it becomes this big uh, agricultural yeah. project. There. Yeah, you uh, got it. Now, do you, do you ride? Do you do? Or do you... No. You don't ride at all? <laughs> Yes, of course we ride. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, are they what kind of horses are they? They're quarter horses. Quarter they're horses. Western quarter horses. Yeah. And, uh, which is uh, sort of going against the tide up in Millbrook, mm -hmm. which is very eastern, riding to hounds, all of that, and we uh, we don't do that. Are the are the quarter horses the one you see uh, sometimes on this uh, this what they call the cutting horse competition? Yes, they that's do right. that stuff. They do that. Not uh, mine. Mine yeah. don't. Mine go nice and straight. In right. a, you know. But those cutting horses, they're amazing to to watch what those uh, things can do, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you do you? Um, <laughs> I'm going to be a grandmother in May because my Palomino quarter horse is going to have, she's going to put a foal on the ground. That's wow. the way cowboys wow. talk. Well, you know, Mary. Yeah. Thank you, Mary. 
Strictly speaking, and geez, strictly speaking, you're not really going to be a grandmother. Yes, I am. Okay, whatever, whatever you people are doing up in the country, I don't. That's, that's a real book. <laughs> uh, now, did you take it, uh, take your horse to have it, uh, you know, uh, bred? Is that what they do? Uh, no, what happened? Well, eventually, yes. But what we did was we auditioned a couple of sires. They were they oh, they sang. What? They Man, sin. what is? Is, what is that? Is there a song involved with that? Just... Okay, now let's hear the song. Thank you. <laughs> what is the audition? Well, it was sort of bedside manner that we were auditioning <laughs> as well as, uh, you know, the, the lineage. You and have to be very this... careful with this, don't you? You want yeah, to get the right combination. You do, because um, it can be vicious. It can be quite violent. Mm -hmm. You know, the, 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 the sire will, will hold on to the, uh, the mane of the, of the, the mare, and mm -hmm. sometimes they bite and it gets ugly. She was up there for 21 days before before it took, <laughs> and she came back with such an attitude. Oh, I <laughs> You must have had quite some time getting her in the van. Yes. Not really ready to come home. Not at all. Um, and what is, what is the gestation period? Eleven months. Eleven months. Oh, yeah. so yeah. So wow, wow. That'll yeah. be very exciting. Have you have you witnessed the birth of a, a horse? No. Before? The closest I've come is uh, across the the road from us. Uh, I saw a horse that was twenty minutes old, uh -huh. and I wow. watched it try to get up. Yeah. And it, it takes much longer than you think. It, it yeah. takes about an hour, an hour. And but I, I would guess that that, that process, uh, just like a human birth, would could not uh, help but produce a real deep emotional feeling in you. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Well, good and you. and some fear and, uh, yeah. and all of that stuff. Uh, we're doing a commercial, then we'll be back here with uh, champion horsewoman and grandmother. Let's do this. I always, I always enjoy doing this. I was uh, lucky enough to be a part of a show you did at CBS. Yeah. Now, let, let's, let's run down the folks who are on the show. You, of course. Yeah. All right. Dick Sean. Yes. Dick has passed away. Yes. Uh, Jim Hampton. Yeah. Very, very funny. Excellent. A great yeah. actor who, is, right. who I still see was on the Chris Elliott show the other night. Yeah. Uh, Swoosey Kurtz, who, right. who keeps winning Broadway awards and that kind of thing. And yes. was in, in what film was she in recently? Um, oh. All right. Go on. All right. All right. We can we'll come back to that one. Next. Uh, uh, oh, oh uh, Judy Kahn. Judy Kahn. Has a huge family. Yeah. Lo lovely woman. Uh, and, and me, of course. Any, who am I leaving out? Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton. And you know what? He's Batman. Yeah. Yes. I know. I thought I recognized him. I wasn't sure. <laughs> I get a kick out of that, that. That, you know, we were running around there at CBS wasting their money, and now he's Batman. I know. So you see, it was all worth it. Um, let, let's talk about your movie for NBC. Yes, it's called Thanksgiving Day. It's a comedy, an irreverent comedy, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it'll be on Monday night on NBC. Was it, was it fun for you to do this? It was this? great fun. Um, I got to work with um, a young man who comes from beginnings similar to yours. He is a disc jockey in Chicago mm -hmm. and apparently the king of Chicago. The king of Chicago. Never acted before and is fabulous in this yeah. movie. And, and he, play, uh, he plays your... He plays my son, yeah, yeah. and Joe Bologna is in it, who plays my ex-fiance, with whom um, I broke up because he had an affair with my mother. While we were engaged, oh, so God. you see, when I say well, irreverent, now, Mary, I really is, mean. Is this is this proper holiday fare? Do you think? <laughs> I think so. I, I do, David. I think so. Uh, I, I think it serves as a lesson to all of us. <laughs> Uh, and 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 uh, I forgot what I was going to ask you. It's a it's a uh, oh oh and and something happens at the Thanksgiving dinner. Can you mention that or not? Tony Curtis dies. Yeah. Now Tony Curtis plays your husband. He's your husband. Yes. Right there at dinner. Boom. Right. But yeah. he's he's in the movie long enough uh, to make an impact. He's yeah. wonderful in it. Yeah. Was it fun? Had you worked with him before? Never worked with him before. It was really terrific. Good yeah. people. And his daughter Kelly Curtis is in it, and mm -hmm. she's wonderful. She's yeah. gorgeous and funny and. Yeah, good people in he, that he's, film. He's been on the show a couple of times. I, I get a real kick out of this guy because he's just, you know, he really is like the personification of, of a, a movie star. You yeah, know? yeah, he is. And, uh, but a, a, the personification of a funny man, too. Yeah. He's always on right. and contributing something. Seems very, very nice. Yeah. Uh, so then, what are you up to now? You off, you off to someplace for the holidays? Are you going to be in town for a while or I both? think so, yeah. I think we're going to uh, go up to um, the country mm -hmm. and have Thanksgiving mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Now, do your horses ever get loose and you have to go out and... Uh, no. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Okay.
No. Do you jump the horses? Do no. Any of <laughs> Do you know what a Western saddle is like? It has a big horn right here, a big <laughs> hobble. If you jumped on a Western saddle, David, no, you'd no, be in terrible trouble. No, but I mean, trouble. you couldn't, you couldn't. <laughs> oh, like I need a little more trouble. But, um, Mary, geez, it's great to see you. It's great to now, see now, you. Now, come back often, because I, if you're in the area, just call us and you can come in anytime. Okay, thanks. Nice to have you here, and uh, good luck with the film. And, and have, watching it. All right. Loves show tunes. <laughs> hey, show tunes. Hey, show tunes. You couldn't come up with a little show tune. Couldn't earlier. come up with one. But that was just sort of the point of what I was trying to do. What that you didn't have? I had no intention of coming up with one. Oh. Well, it certainly worked. <laughs> yes, uh, on July 20th, ladies and gentlemen, our first guest will be the host of Showtime Cable's live broadcast from the uh, Just for Laughs Comedy Festival in Montreal, Canada. Please welcome back to the program, America's sweetheart, Mary Tyler Moore. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Nice to be back. Always good to have you here. It's always a big night for us. It's always special. I, I feel a little extra jolt on the, on the nights that you're with us. Why is that? Well, because you're, you're a big star. Uh, I have nothing but the highest regard for you. you. We get to look at your legs. Oh, thanks. <laughs> All right, let's, let's don't go nuts now. Okay. Uh, I don't want you after the next commercial to sit, turn to, to Paul and say, was Mary a little goofy tonight? No, well, that was, oh, you, you remember everything, I never forget you? a thing. I know, but it seemed like to me the last time, but I explained it, you were goofy, but in a really good delightful sense. Delightful way. Yeah, in a delightful absolutely, way. Yeah, a very appealing way. Yes. Yeah, not, not like you should be institutionalized. Right. No. <laughs> but you see, that's the way you made me feel when I watched it. Because oh. I knew that you knew that I wasn't seeing you. But I did, and I reacted in the oh, way that I did. You're goofier than ever, Mary. <laughs> um, let's talk a little bit about something that uh, I know happened recently. It's very exciting for you. An arrival, a special arrival for you at the farm. Yes. What is it? Tell um, people all about it. We, we had a, a horse, a Palomino quarter horse, mm -hmm. uh, a colt. All right. And uh, he's actually, he's quite unusual. He's very pale. He's almost white, and he has blue eyes, mm -hmm. which is very rare for a horse. He's what they call a perlino, not a palomino, which is what his mother and father were. We don't know what happened, but uh -huh. uh, he looks like a unicorn. He's wonderful. He's just beautiful. Uh, now, was this the, the first uh, uh, birth of a, a horse that you have been... Um... That I have been a party to, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> You, we you we right... sent his mother up to Syracuse. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of girls have gotten in trouble That's up there. Right. That's right. And she came back with, with quite an attitude after having spent 21 days up there. Oh, my. But then 11 months later, we had little John, mm -hmm. who's named after my brother. Oh, that's, that's and cute. And I thought about you, too, because John is a kind of a name like Bob was for the dog that's that you right. had. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, my yeah, old dog, sort Bob. Of unexpected. Yeah. Um, now, uh, t tell us about the, the, the whole process. I mean, you, what, what do you do? I mean, there's not much you can do, is it, once, once a, a, a... Oh, no, you just, you watch and you're terrified. Uh -huh. um, we had um, our horse manager who um, was there watching, supervising the birth, and my husband was there, and I was, I was just clenched the whole time and so relieved to find that she was going to be a good mother because we didn't know she's sort of an anti-social horse uh -huh. this one and we didn't know whether she would take to the baby and ex especially when you consider that she hasn't been around other mares and other foals mm -hmm. so she didn't know what was this, happening this is an absolute her. first experience for first her, experience yeah. and all she knows is that she has these incredible cramps 
I mean, really <laughs> terrible pain, and then there's this thing on the floor. I would go over and smack it. Yeah. It's just amazing to me that they know what to do, and she loved him and, and, and licked him right away. And, and does, the, does the horse, uh, when, when the horse comes out, what is the correct term when the horse, what do they say, when the horse is... Coming out. Yeah, when the horse comes out. <laughs> Uh, how well, you know what they say in, in cowboy uh, terms? They say she's going to put a foal on the ground. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Well, she's going to put a foal on the ground. Right. And, then, and, then, and then the little horse comes out, and, and is it, uh, can it leap up right away? It takes about anywhere from a uh, half hour to two hours. Mm -hmm. And uh, he made it up in about 45 minutes. And that's, I mean, that's yeah. one of those rare moments where you really feel, you know, that there's something more important in life yeah. than New York City and its problems. Did, uh, did this happen in the middle of the night? Like, he, you know... One o'clock in the morning. Oh, that's yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what is it? Well, no, it's, it's like an episode of Lassie or something. It really you know? is, yeah. yes. Yeah. You go down with the lantern <laughs> yeah. to the barn. And Gramps oh, yeah. is there. Sure. Yes, right. uh, uh, and, and, and you don't have any pictures of this horse, do you? Yes, I do. Oh, I do? brought... I, somebody sent some pictures. Aren't there supposed to be pictures? <laughs> yeah. There yeah, there pictures? should be pictures. Oh, I'm sorry uh, we'll that you don't have yeah, them. Yeah, we'll get them. Because uh, it's really sweet. Well, it would well, be I'll a... just have to come back tomorrow night. Now, what will become of the... <laughs> Could you do that? Now, don't, sure. don't joke, because we have an opening. <laughs> <laughs> would I have to wear a different dress? No, no, leave the dress here. We'll steam it out, of course, and you can come right back. Oh, uh, all right, but, uh, but so the, the horse, well, what are you going to do with it? You're not going to race him. You're not going to ride him. You're no, going to ride him. for about two years, we're just going to watch him. Yeah, yeah, And then exciting. we'll see. If he turns out to be a really fabulous stud horse, then he'll stay the way he is. And if not... If not, you eat him? No, but... <laughs> you alter him in some way. Oh, you, all, oh, you, you alter? You alter the oh, horse, because man. otherwise they're now, impossible to ride. They're really tough. He becomes a uh, gelding, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, will you be there for that procedure? No. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think that's not quite as romantic, I don't think. Yeah, we'll let the horse manager have this one all the way himself. <laughs> Uh, and now, we're going to do a commercial. Hang oh, around, all right. Okay. okay, and now, ladies and gentlemen, a message from Bud, so clean, so crisp and cold, nothing beats a Bud. <laughs> I, I can't imagine a better show tonight. Uh, Tony Childs will be here a little bit later. Katerina Vitt, you must have seen her skate in the Some Olympics. Some skater. Yep, yep. Fancy, fancy how, skater. Now, now, this woman, ha I believe, has uh, won gold medals in two Olympics. Yes. How old do you think she is? Just take a guess. Um, she's probably 20. Well, you uh, know. <laughs> she's uh, 25, but that's still young. Oh, she's an older woman then, isn't she? Well, see, <laughs> Yeah, but I'm thinking she's uh, won two Olympic gold medals, and so there's uh, four years between the two, so that, oh. That you, oh, I see, I see. I, I'm amazed that at 25 she's accomplished all yeah. this. Yeah. You see, when you say numbers to me, I just draw a blank. Really? I have dyscalculia, which is the mathematical equivalent of dyslexia. And, well, it's not funny. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It, it's not no. funny. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, but I really do draw a mental uh, a blank. I can't, I can't play 21 in Las yeah. Vegas when I'm there. Just as well. Which I am so often. <laughs> yeah, they, they keep tossing you out of the casinos, don't right, they? Yeah. Uh, she's here again, 86er. <laughs> um, let's, uh, you want to talk a little bit about what your uh, life is like on the farm? Sure. Now, I know that it's not a working farm. It's not like you no. got uh, winter wheat and, and 180 head of Angus or anything like that. But it is sort of like that. I mean, Well, we have a lot of horses. Yeah. And, um, horses are a real love for you, obviously. They are. Yeah. yeah. I love it. But it's a recent love. I only started uh, becoming interested a couple of years ago. And we started having, we bought two horses that we kept at the local uh, equestrian center. Then we decided to build a barn and bring the two horses onto our property. And then we enlarged the barn and got three other horses. And then, of course, you know the Just goes nuts. whole scandal yeah. of the, the foal. And, um, <laughs> and there you go. And if you could, would you spend all of your day uh, with the horses, riding them and grooming them and feeding them? And... <laughs> <laughs> really? No, David. Oh. No, oh. I, I have other things that I do in my life. Uh, uh. Besides just sit and stare at the <laughs> no, horses. I didn't, I didn't, no, I didn't mean to suggest that, but I'm just trying to, to gauge here, you know, uh, what the level this is. Yeah, family. I mean, do you, do you, could you ride all day if you wanted to? Mm, no, you'd get mighty sore doing yeah. that. 
No, I, but we do ride uh, maybe every other day. Yeah. Do you, do you ever get dressed up and uh, take the horses into town and, you know, kind of shoot up the place? And load them with silver. And... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. No, we don't. Uh, tell me about this thing in Canada, the big yeah. Montreal. Is the, the, um, the Just for Laughs, Juste pour Rire. Um, show oh, which is an hour and a half, yep. and I get to live. be the host. It's love is king yeah. live, and it's uh, yes. it's comedians from all over comedians the world. Comedians live. Yeah. Are you, obviously you're a little jumpy about just it. a little, yeah, because yeah. I have to do a monologue. Yeah. Notice I said have to do a monologue. I got to change that attitude right away. Uh, and they have provided material for you. This is material of your own, or they're, no, no, they're in the process <laughs> of providing it for me. And I was hoping you and I could talk after the show. <laughs> 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 and surely you have some things. Oh that yeah, let me let me take you down to the vault. We'll uh, <laughs> we just got it laying around everywhere. But, but I was hoping that would be the case. Uh, and when does this take place again? This is July twentieth. Mm -hmm. Just around the corner. You know, I think that this is going to be a great uh, thrill for you. I, I think a, so, too. I have a feeling that, because when you get up there, uh, when you realize, well, you know this already, but I think once you get on stage, all of your worries and concerns will evaporate. You will be beloved and everything will go great. Steve. <laughs> Congratulations on your horse. Thank and, you. And have a lovely summer. And please Thank come you. back tomorrow night. You too. All right, thanks. All Look, right. very kind of more, kid. All right, we have to pause. program on uh, tomorrow's show Kevin Klein who's in uh, soap dish another one of the hey is somebody moaning up there <laughs> Wait, who did, lady like there's something wrong with tonight's show is that the deal uh, Kevin Klein will be here and uh, crowded house also will be here. and uh, Mary Tyler Moore will be back tomorrow now, uh, if you've been watching this show for a while, you understand our policy. We'll have a guest out in one segment, and if the uh, guest uh, talks about photographs or any personal memorabilia, <laughs> we'll have those in the segment after the guest has left. <laughs> so that's what we've done here tonight. We have photos of uh, Mary's uh, newborn horse there. Let me, uh, Bailey, you want to do this? Can you handle it, Bailey? Two in, two in one night? There, this is, and she said, that's the horse. <laughs> you people. <laughs> 45 minutes old, and remember she said that there was something unusual about the horse's uh, eyes, and we have a, a picture of that. Look at this. Look at the eyes of that horse. There's something. This horse has got the, got the devil in him. Look at that. <laughs> something, something wicked in that horse. Uh, cute little horse. Uh, coming up uh, on the program tonight, Tony Childs uh, will be here, and then... Uh, Katrina Witt, and we have some uh, wonderful uh, videotape of Katrina winning uh, her second Olympic gold medal. We'll have that on tomorrow night's program. <laughs> Just a new policy we've hammered out for ourselves. If the guest has photographs or videotape or record albums, take care of those after they're gone. That's how we do it here. One more time, let's go back out there to uh, just off the uh, coast of San Diego. This is the America's Cup. It's being contested right now. Looks like somebody's busted open a pretty good lead there. Okay, that's good. Thanks, Hal. Nice. Is there, is there anything else, Hal? Are we missing something there? And... You want to see it again? Here we go. Yeah, let's take a look at it again. Just make sure everything's... Oh, wait a minute. Oh, my God. See, you just never know. Look, something awful. My God! I'm telling you, boy, oh boy, it's that kind of thing that has given yacht racing a horrible image in this country. I'm sorry you people from New Zealand had to see that. Do you, do you mind being called Kiwis? Is that all right or not all right? That's fine. You don't mind being called Kiwis? No. All right, thank you very much. Is there any particular kind of fruit you don't like being called? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, our first guest is uh, one of America's uh, best, just like that tragedy on the high seas. Did you yeah, see that, Paul? And we were there to observe yeah. it. 
Our first guest is one of America's best-loved performers, and Saturday, this very Saturday, she will be taking part in a Dick Van Dyke Show tribute during Comic Relief 5 on HBO. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Mary Tyler Moore. Good to see you. Thanks. You Good look, you, you look, every time we see you, you look terrific. You look better than ever each time we see you. You like my big, way out, funzy hair? Yeah, but you know, it is, it is a little different, but it looks it terrific when I see it on the, on the camera. It's different, but yet it looks great. Well, it's certainly, it's red, isn't it? Well, it's, no, as I see it here in person, it's not, it's, uh, no, it's not it red. It isn't? I think we just have a bad monitor. <laughs> what, what did you ask for? Did you ask for red? I did. Yeah. Yes, I said medium curly. <laughs> <laughs> and the color, how would you describe the color? Uh, red. Yep. <laughs> but it's not. It's not really red. Yes, it's... it is, David. It's red. <laughs> there it is, but if you look, have you seen it? Have you seen it in person? I've only seen it through the mirror. Yeah. No, how it's... are your mirrors here? Good. It's like, a, it's like a strawberry blonde, almost. Not quite, but almost. All right. It's, uh, oh, it's kiwi colored, actually. <laughs> You know, uh, what I've taken to watching here lately, and I guess everybody has, are the, uh, the, uh, the uh, Dick Van Dyke reruns on, um, why can't I think of it? Nick at Night. Nick at Night. There, there you, go. you go. Boy, are those shows entertaining. They really are, aren't they? Very, very entertaining. Yeah. And there's not, a, there's not a person in the cast you don't enjoy watching. Well, that's nice. Yeah. And you, you, of course, couldn't be cuter in the show. Well, I know. Yeah. And, God, and uh, <laughs> talk about hair. That was some hair. You could hang clothes on that hair. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, uh, seemed very dark and then just kind of... It was very dark yeah. and... Hugged and, your uh, face. Very flipped. Yeah. Little points sticking out here on the end. How long was that show on the air? It was on the air for, uh, for five years, mm -hmm. but... Um, uh, and the Mary Tyler Moore show was on for seven years, but the Dick Van Dyke show um, did something like uh, 30 episodes per season. Mm -hmm. That was way back when ice covered much of the earth. Um, <laughs> now, of course, you're down to something like 18 per season. Is that really all it is for, an, for a, a full run on well, network television? Well, I don't television? know. It's been so long since I've or so, done I thought, yeah. episodic television. Yeah. I don't know. So anymore. nearly twice the number in those days than, than they're doing now. About. Yeah. yeah. Uh, was this your first big TV job? Was this your first starring role in TV? It, it, well, it was. I, I had uh, appeared on a television series called The Richard Diamond Show as an off-camera. Yeah. Person, not really off camera, but you never saw my full face. You'd see my mouth, or you'd see my legs, mm -hmm. and you'd you'd hear this incredibly sexy. Well, you'll be the judge of that voice saying, "Hi, Mr. D." Yeah, yeah. So I guess not. Um, but uh, then came an audition to play the part of Danny Thomas's daughter, and um, uh, they called me back time and time again until it was just down to two of us, and he gave the role to another actress. But he was concerned because I had been back so many times and he took me aside and he said, I just want you to know the only reason you didn't get the part is with a nose like yours, no one would believe you're my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Marlo loves that story. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I tell you what, after the show, why don't you and I drive by and tell it to her? All right. <laughs> uh, so he, he was kind of looking out for you a little bit. He was, and then um, uh, two years later, I think it was two, three years later, when they were looking for someone to play Dick Van Dyke's mm -hmm. wife, he said, what about that actress with the three names and the funny nose? Now, Danny Thomas was a producer of that he show? He was that one of the work? producers, along yeah. with Sheldon Leonard and Carl Reiner. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and this up? Saturday night, we are, in fact, going to have a, a reunion. It's the first one that I will have been a part of. Yeah. Have, they, they have not put together another version of that show since, have they or have they? Was there a different version? Like you mentioned reunions. What do you mean? You, <laughs> all right, let, let's go back. You said that this is the first reunion that oh, you have been a part of. Ah, but there have been reunions, maybe not on television, but there have been um, get-togethers where everybody was there except me. Yeah. Now, now, Mary, was it, was it a get-together or was it a reunion? Well, it was a, a kind of a, a getting together of a reunion, if you will, yeah. of, um, but, but, of the cast. But you know, they, and the, uh, producers. they almost could, and I'm, I'm sure people have talked about doing it, putting together like an hour special. Well, of... so you see, that's what I thought you yeah. meant. Yeah, but now are they going to do that? Not with me, they're not. Really? You would, nev you would never do no, that? I, well, I did it with, with the Mary Tyler Moore show, and it was fine, and it was fun, but I think it's better to leave some things the way they were. Mm -hmm. 
and, uh, and not bring people back all aged and stooped and redheaded. No, 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 all aged and stooped. No, no one wants that. I mean, right. that's why the Golden Girls is gone. But, <laughs> but, oh, no. Oh, no. Thank, you. Thank you very much. That was bad. But, but look at, look at you, and then also when you see Dick Van Dyke on the, the Nick at Night, the, the, the uh, as he is today, Dick Van yes. Dyke, couldn't look better. He does. He yeah. looks terrific. So, so the two of you would be great, and far from aged and stooped. Well, I don't know. We had dinner together, um, uh, Dick and his lady and, and Robert, uh, my husband, and I, um, at a restaurant last week, and we really turned some heads. I, I must say it was I would a lot of so. fun. Yeah. Yeah. People who were either saying, oh, God, look, aren't they cute, or oh, my God. God, have they no, aged? No, no, no. You'd believe me, it would be a great pair. Great pair. Yeah. All right. That's, that's the most important thing when ordering steak, too. Get it aged and stooped if you can. <laughs> uh, we're going to pause here, but we'll be right back with Mary. To the uh, program, look who's here. It's our old friend Mary Tyler Moore. Not so old. It's your friend. No, no, our friendship is old. Is that all right? I've I've known you. Well, uh, maybe not even. Is it a friendship? Well, <laughs> See, maybe was, I was being presumptuous. There was the engagement, but a lot of people don't realize this. Mary and I were married <laughs> for about six months. It was brief. Oh, yeah. but but exciting, wasn't it? Fiery. Yeah. Yes. Um, no, we, we've known each other since, like, 77, 77, 78? 78, 79. Yeah, well, that's, something. that's, geez, that's nearly, uh... I call it a timeless friendship. Thank you. I'll, I'll take that. If <laughs> not rewarding. Oh, for, for me, for me, it's been nothing but rewarding. Well, except that it's so seldom that we see each other, we just see that's, each other that's, the re that's where the reward comes in. Ah! <laughs> I don't know what any of this means. Uh, let's see. Uh, Alan Toussaint is on the program, and Crispin Glover. Have you seen uh, Crispin Glover, a young actor? Oh, yes. Yeah, He's wonderful. Of, Back to the Future. Kind of a goofball. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, he, seems, he seems perfectly uh, splendid and controlled. <laughs> I saw him briefly. Do you, uh, do you want to look at this a little bit of uh, old uh, film we have of you? One of your Shh. first television things or not? Sure. All right. How do you, you know what we're going to look at, don't you? I think you're, it's probably the commercial. You're the hot point. You're happy yeah. hot point. All right. How, how old a kid were you then? I was uh, I was 19 years old, mm -hmm. and when I started doing these commercials, which is the, the actually I was 18 years old, and it was the first thing I did after high school, and uh, in order to play a pixie because a pixie is supposed to be neuter, I had to uh, in wearing this leotard wear a cupless bra that just flattened me out to nothing, and then um, I married during the filming of this. Uh, uh, commercial series and got pregnant very quickly thereafter and still had to fit into this flat bra yeah. and I think what you're going to see is me at about three months pregnant so much for your still pixies bound. being neuter no, yes, that's right. uh, okay 18 but 18 this is 18 19 this is a great uh, great job for a young woman all right yeah. Hal, roll that uh, videotape there if you have it somewhere please Every day's a holiday with hot boys. I'm Happy Hot Boys. Ozzy and Harriet have guests tonight, and they've just finished dinner. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry you didn't get the, the one with me skating, ice skating on the ice cube tray. Oh, that was but there was, you know, I still think of you as Happy Hot Point. Uh, now and and you 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 have you have some things you wanted to do for us some little performances some small little uh, particular identifiable things that yes you can I do, do. Okay? because I I want to stretch as right. an actress and I want to do a little of the old but then I have some new okay. things for you Dave too. may I help you in any way um no okay. just uh, react in a kindly manner <laughs> talk about um, stretching all right well walking down memory lane we'll we'll do our first one oh. Of 
the same genre. Mr. Grant. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. All the hits. And then I have one. I have one that I'm dying to do, but I need somebody out there who's going to produce some kind of Robin Hood film to cast me in a role, and it need not be a big role. I'd like to just be one little clip in a mob, uh, a mob scene, wearing a hood, having one tooth blacked out, and looking fiercely into the lens and saying, Robin Hood! <laughs> You marry, marry, marry. I know. You may be spending too much time on the farm. I know. I know. Do you want to see my fish face? Oh, a fish face. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sure, yeah, by all this means. This is hard because you can't laugh when you do it. Uh. Okay. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I it's, do need to work, don't yeah. I? Uh, but th I think this is going to be very exciting. Uh, Saturday, this coming Saturday. That's right. Uh, Comic Relief. Comic Relief 5, the Dick Van Dyke Show tribute. Will everyone uh, from the cast be there? Everyone. Yes. Well, no, not everyone. <laughs> some won't, some will. Some, that's right. So it was harder to get invitations to some. Yes. Yeah, all right, I understand. Because they'd be dead. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> True. Uh, well, you know, I think the world of you, don't well, you? Well, thanks. Yeah, it's Mary Tyler Moore, ladies and gentlemen. that uh, everybody's here with us tonight. I'm happy Mary Tyler Moore is here, uh, the band, Jeff Altman, and our new friends from Pittsburgh are down there enjoying themselves. Mm, I'm happy about that. Yeah. Uh, our first guest is uh, certainly one of the most talented and beloved uh, women in uh, television history. Uh, she has a brand new movie, uh, the title of which is uh, Stolen Babies. Now, this thing airs Thursday at 9 p.m. on the Lifetime Network. Ladies and gentlemen, here she is, Mary Tyler Moore. <laughs> Wonderful. That's thank a you. that's a beautiful dress. Thank you. Lovely tie. Well, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for being here. I, I'm going to try and hear and for a fashion here a, a compliment for you. I've been watching. And you know all about this. The the Nick at Night. Yes. Now yeah. at a certain part of the day, well not a certain part specifically, 2:30, the Mary Tyler Moore Show comes on, which 2:30 a.m. 2:30 a.m. That's I knew right. about the nine o'clock and 9:30. I get I to see it at 2:30 a.m. I see. By special arrangement? It, well, no. <laughs> that, that's, that's when I'm done crying myself to sleep. <laughs> and then, immediately after that, comes the Dick Van Dyke Show. And you'd think it would be just the reverse order, wouldn't you? Well, I, I no. No, you wouldn't. No, well, it's, it's the way it ought to be, as no, far as I'm concerned. because the Van Dyke Show came first. Oh, chronologically. Chronologically. Historically. Yes. But my point is, uh, you're great in that show. You're great in both shows, and it's a really nice thing to be able to watch every week. I really Thank get a big you. kick That's out of it. That's really nice Thank of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. You. It's nice too because there are uh, there's a whole new generation of people, young kids who are watching it, and the, and they'll recognize me in the street, and and it. First they, oh, Mary Tyler Moore, and then I can see they're looking at the wrinkles. And they, <laughs> no, 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 it's changed a lot. Yeah, no, no. that's not that's not necessarily true. I, I I'm looking at you, and your legs are still the same, better Thank than you. ever. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> but you know what's also great? Those two shows we're talking about half hour situation comedies. Those two shows are just. The best. They really were beautifully written. E everyone yes. is funny, everyone is smart, everyone is silly, but they're all really very nicely crafted. You know what? And it's one of the things I love about you that nobody gets away with being or saying cliches. And, uh, you know, 
Well, and that show had no cliches. Everything yeah. was a little bit of a surprise. They're very, very entertaining. Any, yeah, anyway, um, 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 I understand because you were hurrying to be here <laughs> that there was some, some kind of a police uh, scene, a chase or a high-speed chase or something. I almost ended up in the slammer. No kidding. Yes. Well, what happened, what, you know, when I was a kid growing up, when you looked at a car, you knew a Ford was a Ford and a Cadillac was a Cadillac, and they always had a very definitive That's look. That's right. Today, I can't tell one car from the other. So I was in Los Angeles. I was there for a tribute for Dick Van Dyke. And um, I had a rental car. It was a Lexus, which is a, you know, it's a very Great nice cars. car. Oh, yeah. But I can't tell. I don't know. I have to be shown where the steering wheel is and the, the brake and all the things <laughs> and where to put the key in. Sometimes how to get the key out, <laughs> which is something I don't understand. Anyway, I went, I put it in with a valet parking. I went to do some, some business. I came back. They gave me a white car. I got in it. I drove away. And it wasn't until three hours later, after going through various stores coming in and out, that I realized this was not the same car that I came in with. I finally went back to the hotel where I was swooped down upon by three or four people who worked there, including the people who had rented me the car, telling me that there was an all-points police bulletin oh. out for me because I had had this car for so long, and it was a Chrysler, yeah. which is a very nice car, <laughs> don't be fun. But it was not a Lexus, you know, and I didn't know the difference. Yeah. I can't even work the dial on the radio in a car anymore, because it's is not a dial. A, cu a couple of, a cu oh, that's right, everything is odd now, but a it couple is. of things you mentioned there interest me. One, you said somebody actually has to show you where the steering wheel is? <laughs> that, that's a little frightening. Well, you know, it's just for certain kinds of turns yeah. I need to be shown how to place my <laughs> Certain hands. kinds of turns. Right. <laughs> and then the other thing, you're saying this happened in Los Angeles? In Los Angeles, oh, yes, see, in now, Beverly Hills. Yeah, my gosh. Ooh. I mean, this is a true story. They were looking for me. They yep. thought I had stolen a car. Yeah. Oh, man. Have yeah. you ever been arrested in your life for anything? No. Uh, <laughs> come on, Mary. No, I never have. Hey. I'm one of the few people I know who never stole anything. Yeah. Because I stole a Tootsie Roll when I was five, and my mother made me walk right back to the store and tell the lady what I had done. Yep. See, now that's so, the way things ought to be taken care of. I know. I think that's what we're getting away from. Right? Right. Am I right about that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh, and I understand you have a joke you've prepared for us. Is that true? Do you have a joke? I have a joke. Okay. I don't know how well prepared I am. All right, I'll tell you what. We'll, we'll pause here and give you a second to right. re-prepare yourself, okay. and then when we come back, we'll hear the joke, all right? Uh, we're going to do that uh, right after this commercial here with uh, Mary Holly. <laughs> And uh, Jeff Altman, he, he played that song for you, you know. Uh, ZZ Top. Always been one of Leg. my favorites. Legs. Oh, man. <laughs> Knock really like us it. out. Yes. Um, now, I was thinking about this. Uh, 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 Carl Renner, I guess, was the creator of the Dick Van Dyke Show. One of the creators or the creator? Well, he was the creator. <laughs> and, yeah. And we know his son now, Rob Reiner, has come into his own, first <laughs> as an actor and now as a, uh, a director of yes. major motion pictures. Was, was he there when you were doing those shows? Rob Reiner used to hang around the set. How old was he? Well, about 12 years old yep. when a particular incident happened that comes to mind. Um, and that was one day I was walking down the, the, in the studio and, and I was wearing a pair of those capri pants. Mm, very tight. That I used to, well, yeah. yes, all right. <laughs> and Love Rob, those capris. 12 years old, walks by me and gives me a little swat on the butt. <laughs> and so I, being the wow. righteous young actress that I was, went straight to Carl Reiner and told him what his son yeah. had done. And so he took uh, Rob aside and really uh, laid into him pretty good, which is why you will never see me in a Rob Reiner film. <laughs> no, no. I'm betting, anyway. No. I'm betting. No. Yeah, but it's the same kind of thing. It, needs, it was a lesson that the kid needed to learn. Exactly. Unless, of course, it was part of a 4-H project or something. <laughs> that um, was that a bovine no, reference? No, I, it was, it was, it was no. No, it was, you know. Uh, all right, do you want to tell the joke or not? All right, sure, I'll okay. tell this joke. It's, uh, the, 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 the time is 1950, and it's an agent's office, and a young man comes in 
who auditions and is spectacular. He can sing, he can dance, he can do sleight of hand. He plays the piano, he's brilliant. The agent is ecstatic. He says, you are gonna be such a big star. What is your name? And he says, Penis Von Lesbian. <laughs> and the agent says, we're going to have to change that. I, and I don't know what we're going to come up with, but I think I have it. Dick Van Dyke. You're very, you're very proud of yourself, aren't you? <laughs> Uh, uh, how, how's your dog doing? Which one? I well, got two, but I got the little one here. Would you like you to see him? Oh, yeah. yeah. Is it, where is he? He's somewhere. Where is he? Where, what's the dog's name? His name is Dudley. D Dudley. <laughs> Dudley. Come on. Oh, yeah, Dudley. Yes. Come here, Dudley. Here, here Dudley. Here. Hey, Dudley, how are you? Dudley. What, what kind of dog is Come Dudley? On. Get him here. He's Hi, a buddy. petit basset griffin von Dien. <laughs> They were bred in France in the 16th century for hunting rabbits. Oh, and they're yeah. They're new to the United States, but they've just been accepted by the American Kennel Club. How old is Dudley? He's six. Yeah. Does Dudley do any, any little tricks? Well, any as stunts? a matter of fact, David, he does join me in song. Oh, boy. And if you're patient enough and you want to go through this, um, yeah. eventually he will join in, so we'll give right. it a try. Okay? Now, w now, when you say eventually, you're talking about w within the, the calendar year? I'm trying to three. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do you need okay. music from the no, kids? No, I don't think so. All right, Dudley, knock right. us out. Okay. Here we go. If I loved you, words wouldn't come in an easy way. Round in circles I'd go. Again, I would try to say all I'd want you to know, longing to tell you, but afraid and shy. I'd let my golden chances pass me by. Do you think I'll get the part in the vita? <laughs> He's no Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> in the mist of day. Come on, Dudley. Never, Come on, Dudley. never to know I love you. <laughs> He's not going to do it. Maybe, maybe, I tell you what, maybe you go, you, you and the dog go off and have a little chat, and if we have, <laughs> if we have time, let you come back and try it again. Tyler Moore and Dudley, ladies and gentlemen. It was fun to hear the song, though. Uh, we have to pause for station identification. We'll be right back.